Good morning, everyone. It's great to have you here today. Wonderful to be in God's house with you this morning as we worship together. And we just pray God's spirit into this place on World Communion Sunday. It's this one Sunday picked out every year where every Christian church across the globe holds hands and uh, shares communion with one another. And so we just pray God's presence into these places. So whether you've been worshiping with us for a long time or just joining us uh, just recently or following us online, we're glad to have you here today. Just have a couple of announcements to share. We have a follow-up shot clinic that's coming up uh, next Sunday on October the 9th. So if, uh, you know, where you were a little leery about getting like your updated COVID shot and your flu shot at the same time or any of the others that we had offered, we uh, uh, just booked two close together. And so whichever one you got, you can get the other one next week. And uh, that's going to be offered not only between services, but after the second service as well. We have a trivia night coming up. Uh, one of our sister churches down in the inner city, um, Epiphany United Church of Christ, they've been doing wonderful inner city ministry uh, really as, as long as I've known them. And so uh, the fundraiser helps support what they do uh, down uh, in the mission that God has called them to, but we are hosting it here at St. Paul's. It's going to be on Saturday, October the 15th. Um, you can put a table together or you can just sign up with Pastor Erica as an individual uh, if, uh, cause, uh, and then we will put a table together um, with those who have kind of registered with us as individuals. It's going to be a fun night. We're hoping to get a whole, a full room together. Uh, if you've never been to a trivia night before, it can be a whole, whole lot of fun. So think about that October the 15th, uh, starting at six o'clock at night. And finally, uh, our, our youth group, uh, the SALT youth group, those are the younger kids, the starting in third grade. Um, they're third through fifth graders. They're going to go to Sky Zone next Saturday on October the 9th, Sunday, uh, October the 9th from 1 to 3. And anything more you need me to say about that? If anyone has someone that they know would enjoy that, let me know. We'll get them signed up. We, uh, we had a wonderful day yesterday. We hosted the um, St. Louis Association uh, fall meeting here. Wonderful, wonderful praise and worship. Uh, beautiful music or whatever, and it was just an honor to be able to serve in your name uh, and, and host here yesterday. So, as we worship together today, I invite us to be in a time of prayer. God, on this World Communion Sunday, we are reminded that you are the giver of life to all of us. We pray not just for this church, not just the churches in our community, or our county, and city or our state we we pray today for churches around the whole world renew our worship help it to come alive that it might give power to our witnessing to the goodness of the gospel of Jesus Christ your son restore us give us unity give us strength to those who are searching for a place to belong and a God who loves, for that kind of uh, obedience to your word creates unity. It heals divisions. It brings families together. It gives us purpose. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would strengthen our bonds of peace with one another and unite us in your spirit, which knows no boundaries. You are the author of truth, and we do confess today that there have been times that we have felt divided. At odds with one another, we might be feeling that maybe in a personal relationship, a relationship in our family or a work relationship. That bad spirit has risen up among us and set us against each other. But your Holy Spirit seeks to come into our lives and do exactly the opposite, to bring unity and hope and a peace and love that only your Holy Spirit can provide. Take us from mistrust of one another and contention and all that might divide or separate us and bring us to reconciliation. That we might put aside our personal grievances that we may go about your business with a single mind 
devoted to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, your Son. You are the author of all that is good, all that is fair. You give us calm when our life feels turbulent. Heal us from all that divides us and bring us back into your, into your loving arms, bearing some likeness of your divinity that we know you have said resides within each one of us, that we might be the hands and the heart of your son Jesus, that your example might shine through us for all to see. Embrace us with your love. Make us one in spirit. And by your peace, which makes all things new, we ask your presence here as we celebrate World Communion Sunday with our brother and sister churches around the world, that grace, mercy, and tenderness might shine forth. And we pray all this in the name of your Son who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words from the second chapter of Acts, verses 41 through 47 from the Message Translation. That day, about 3,000 took him at his word, were baptized, and were signed up. They committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles, the life together, the common meal, and the prayers. Everyone around was in awe all those wonders and signs done through the apostles. And all the believers lived in a wonderful harmony, holding everything in common. They sold whatever they owned and pooled their resources so that each person's need was met. They followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple, followed by meals at home, every meal a celebration, exuberant and joyful as they praised God. People in general liked what they saw. Every day their number grew as God added those who were saved. And my family routinely laughs at the fact that when I was a child, I was a very picky eater. I would often try a new food by putting it on my fork or spoon and slowly moving it up to my tongue where it would make the least surface area connection possible with said food, and I would declare it good or yucky. And I am still a picky eater, often a squeamish eater. That is why it is so fabulously amazing that most of my favorite meal times have been around food that I just couldn't eat although I did try it all. When I was a child, my friend Karen's mom would cook elaborate meals for friends and family. Karen's mom was a chef that had moved to the States from China. She would set the table, fish heads and all, and I would chow down, mostly on rice. But I loved the community gathered, often church members, the laughter, the intergenerational experience the beautiful bowls and the sipping spoons. Then I went to Jamaica on a mission trip. And one of my favorite things outside of the people is that in the hill country, there are free range chickens and goats and the occasional cow just tethered to something in the area because fences are expensive. In one of my favorite pictures from Jamaica, I am milking a goat. Yes, you heard me right. And after a day of church and community, the Jamaicans surprised us with a fancy luncheon. They had a special place for their guest of honor, 
to sit under a makeshift tent as they sat on the stairs of the church or on the ground around us. The main course, goat with green sauce. This is a delicacy in Jamaica, and they had spared no expense for us. Luckily, one of my youth loved goat with green sauce and let me sneak most of mine onto his plate. And that was followed by the chicken foot soup we had at the community gathering on yet another night. It really was good, uh, but I didn't happen to have a chicken foot in my bowl. That night was one of my favorites. And hungry, my friend Balint's mother took off work to help host me, his friend from the States, while I was in town. She would make us breakfast, sandwiches for the day, and dinner when we returned. And I wanted to be as gracious as I possibly could be, so I decided to try to eat everything. Now, Balint knows that I am a picky eater, and one night we were eating soup with a mystery meat, and he kept smiling. I kicked him under the table and told him not to tell me until I had eaten it all. Goose liver, a delicacy in Hungary, and I have now eaten it more than once. But my favorite Hungarian meal was when we all left the city and went out to the farm strips in the country. Every family has their own plot so they can grow their own vegetables and save money. A large group gathered around the fire as we sat on the ground or on stumps and ate bread and drippings. You heard me. You cook the piece of fat until the grease is dripping out, and then you rub it on your bread like butter, and you eat it. This I actually liked. The community I will never forget. Or the escargot I ate because my friend Christopher got married in France to a French woman and her neighbors own an escargot company. Or the Tupperware container full of stinky cheese that was passed around during the rehearsal dinner. Did you know that French meals can literally last almost all day? Or the duck that still looked like a duck for the wedding meal. I could go on and on, but I won't. I think you more than get the picture. Table time is universal. And it can be some of the most beautiful time we spend together, any of us, anywhere. Have you ever hung out in the kitchen with friends? Ever look forward to Thanksgiving, Christmas, or Easter because you lounge all day hanging with friends, friendsly cooking, but truly enjoying time together? getting refueled by a delicious meal. See, in this passage, Jesus has been crucified, has risen, and ascended. The followers of Jesus have been struggling about the role that they are supposed to play now that Jesus is not around to physically lead them. Things become clearer when the Holy Spirit comes upon them And they come together. They come together and begin to live their discipleship out. And this is what those that followed Jesus decide discipleship should look like, having known Jesus and his hopes and dreams for them and God's children everywhere. They lived in wonderful harmony, holding everything in common. They sold whatever they owned and pooled their resources so that each person's needs was met. They followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple, followed by meals at home, every meal a celebration, exuberant and joyful as they praised God. But here's my favorite part. People in general liked what they saw. Every day their number grew. I'm sure their numbers did grow, Can you imagine being a part of a community that intentionally pools resources to make sure everyone's needs are met? That, to me, is one of the most fantastic verses of this passage and worthy of its own sermon, but today is not that day. This is what I want you to hear on this day, this World Communion Sunday, where God's people all around the world, all God's children everywhere, 
are celebrating the meal that Jesus gave to us. I want you to hear that believers lived in wonderful harmony, worshiping every day, giving thanks, and being renewed by the Spirit. And then they went to each other's homes and ate and celebrated exuberantly, joyfully. And people were attracted to this, the thankful living, being able to see the Spirit at work in these believers, seeing their joy, their exuberant eating. I wonder what outsiders see when they look upon our community, upon my spirit and my eating. Do they like what they see? Now, I want to make it clear that I don't do what I do. I don't live the life I live hoping that others like what they see or to please others. But I do know that when the kingdom of God is being lived out faithfully, that you can't help but be drawn to it, to want to know what those within already know. Now, I am no Pollyanna. Pollyanna, a person characterized by irrepressible optimism and a tendency to find good in everything. But that's what a lot of people called my grandmother. I'm aware that the description we hear of the early Christian community seems idealistic, too good to be true. But isn't the kingdom of God exactly that? The ideal, living and knowing life in a way that is almost too good to be true? If anyone was able to live out the lessons Jesus taught, I would think it would be those that knew him and felt him and loved him and knew that they were loved by him. Those that experienced sacrifice through him, followed by mercy and grace and love overflowing. See, they received the Spirit and let it become who they were, how they lived. And they were able to pass that Spirit on, and it was contagious. It was catching. People liked what they saw, and they wanted to be a part of it. Meals are important. What we call communion today the last Passover meal Jesus shared has become a symbol of all that we can be thankful for, all that God has done for us and will continue to do. Jesus wants us to think about him, not just when we celebrate communion formally once a month, but every time we eat or drink, we are to remember him and all that he has done. How does the world change when every one of us thinks about all that Jesus has done for us every time we sit down at the table? Whether we are alone or with our immediate family or a large gathering of family and friends or at a wedding feast or a potluck dinner, I tra take great joy in knowing that today I am connected to my friend Karen in Texas as she celebrates communion. My friend Kareen from Jamaica, as she leads her congregation in communion. My Hungarian friends in Jenga Varkon that led me, fed me so many meals while I helped them fix up their church. And I think of them now as they break bread together on this day. My French friends as they worship in a very old and beautiful church and celebrate the cup the blessing of what God has done for them and for all of us. I pray that all over the world there is much exuberant eating going on and that we may all feel connected by it. May others like what they see and know the Spirit in their lives too. Amen. My friends in Christ, we come to this table before the God of thanksgiving. And here we celebrate communion with those who are around the world. We lift up our hearts together, we remember and we pray. We hear Jesus' voice saying to us, welcome, you are welcome here. Whatever you have done, wherever you have come from, you're all welcome at this table. We know that Christ's spirit of peace 
rests here with us. We dine at Christ's table with our sisters and brothers around the world. Even though we might be diverse in our cultures, Jesus comes and nourishes all of us as one. The bread and the cup that we share here with others are gifts that unite all who claim Jesus as the Son of the living God. And so it was at table that Jesus broke bread with the disciples and those who gathered with him. He said, this is my bread which is broken for you. And every time that you eat it, do so in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he passed it to all those around the table. This is my blood which will be spilled for every son of mine, every daughter of mine, every person who comes, is welcome here, is forgiven and healed. And every time that you do this, you will do so in remembrance of me. I invite us to just be in a time of prayer as we pray over these elements today. Lord, as we gather around the world through this wonderful meal, in everywhere and in every place, we ask you to bless all of your children. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, we link arms with our brothers and sisters around the globe. And we ask you to pour your grace, not only into these elements, but into all of us. May we see in each other your light and your love and you. May it not matter our differences or our names or our languages, our looks or our ways of doing things. May what matter today and every day be that we are one in you. Amen. You should have been offered a communion on the way in, and I'm going to invite you to just take the cellophane, the clear part at the top, and peel that back, and that will reveal a wafer underneath the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. And likewise, if you want to pull back the purple foil to reveal the juice underneath. The blood of Christ shed for you that you might have life and life in all of its abundance. Take and drink. Let's give thanks. Wherever we're at in our lives this morning, we ask you, Lord, to help us rise. Rise in your resurrection power from this table where we are for this, at this table where we find you. We come because we feel that we have been served by you by your own hand. That we too might be empowered to extend our hands to those in the world. Help us to be about peace, that it brings a sense of hope and purpose and comfort to those whom we encounter. And we ask this all through Jesus Christ, through Christ, in Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. So next week, we are taking up a special offering called Neighbors in Need. There's actually an envelope in the pews in front of you if you want to partake in this, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Neighbors in Need is a special mission offering of the United Church of Christ that supports ministries of justice and compassion throughout the whole of the United States. So I want to just share one, per, one story that ha might help you uh, feel connected. This past summer... There was a grant from the United Church of Christ through this Neighbors in Need offering that went out to 24 high school students who happened to live in an economically challenged part of Houston, Texas. 
And there they learned that their voice, their activism, carried out through a local campaign, made a difference in their community. And all started with just a chance encounter with uh, a gentleman named Sam. It was after a youth group one night, they all went out to McDonald's, and that's where they met Sam for the first time. Sam had retired after a lifetime, uh, his, most of his life working at a factory and found out that in retirement, he did not have enough to live on, and so he went to work for McDonald's. And so he, they started having a conversation with their pastor about what it means to have a living wage, to be able to just survive. And that encounter with Sam and their pastor gave them some insights into what their voice could do. So uh, their pastor, who uh, is uh, the pastor of a, a church in uh, an impoverished part of Houston called Just Love Church, it's affiliated not just with the United Church of Christ, but also a fellow denomination, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. And this pastor actually also happened to teach social studies at the local high school. And so they, he got them organized, got a grant from neighbors in need, and made a difference in that community in helping to raise the minimum wage. And so that chance encounter with Sam not only helped Sam's life, but the whole pe all the, 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 the community uh, that, of people who lived below the poverty line in that whole area. And so as you think about what you like, might like to give to neighbors in need, uh, take an envelope with you. You can pray about that during the week. You can bring it back next week. And uh, we will be sending that off uh, collectively um, uh, in just a couple weeks. Neighbors in Need does help neighbors right here in our own country who are just trying to, um, uh, who just need a hand up, not a handout, but a hand up. As you think about how you like, might like to support the mission and ministry here at St. Paul's, it's the same thing. If you uh, uh, are able to, to share a gift with us, there's always offering plates at the back of the sanctuary when you leave, or you can go on our website if you're an electronic giver and go to www.sp3u.org, and there's a giving tab right there, or you can always send in a donation to 5508 Telegraph Road. Thank you for supporting the ministry here at St. Paul's. Everyone is invited to the table, and it is a joyous event, but not just this communion table. Every time you sit down, remember Jesus and what Jesus has done for you, and think today how all around the world we are connected by this table, this meal. May God bless and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and bring you peace, my friends, until we meet again. And the mission of St. Paul's is to be a place of worship, refuge, and outreach. Amen. <laughs>